everybody, Coma Comics here, and uh, I'm doing a little contest video for Nerd vs. Fat. He, uh, I, think, I can't remember, I think it's 200 subscribers, so congratulations to you, my friend. Uh, really awesome channel, love following your uh, trials and travails on Instagram. Go sub them up and check them out if you guys have not already. Uh, usual rules about, you know, don't be an underage, don't live in Iceland, and... Be subscribed to his channel. Make sure if you make a video, you link your video onto his contest video. Uh, and I will link his contest video to the bottom of this video. So anybody watching this video wants to see his contest video, doesn't have to go to his channel, but can get it from my channel to go to his channel, find his video, so they can do their own video to link in his video. Got it? Good. So three things he wants uh, in this contest video. He wants you to show off um, a shelf in your like uh, little... Woman cave, man cave, specialty room, whatever it's called, wants you to talk about a comic book that has sentimental value more than monetary value to you, and would like you to uh, state, show, discuss what is your favorite movie. So without further ado, here we go. All right, Nerd vs. Fat wanted us to choose our favorite shelf, and I don't know, it's kind of tough. Each shelf has... A few different things in that are pretty cool. So, I'm not going to make a decision. I'm going to cheat. Let's see the top shelf. <laughs> there's Millennium Falcon. There's Black Knight from Monty Python. There's a Star Wars clock. There is the Guy of the Brain game. And there is a little Jin Erso. Not Jin Erso. Um... Ray, it doesn't have a last name. There is a pencil sharpener post office box. When I went to England, I didn't know that those are post office boxes. That's a big family joke about Ian not knowing that that's a post office. Uh, like put your mail mail in there. Um, and this is a drawing from Redland, signed by Jordi Belair on the other side. Gandalf and Sauron, or Saruman. I forget which one is the evil eye and which one's the wizard. But anyway, Christopher Lee. <laughs> And Ian McKellen fighting over the orb. There is Brave Sir Robin. There is Qui-Gon Jinn. Gosh, I hated that movie with him in, but I thought that was a cool character. There's my Lord of the Rings Pez dispensers. <laughs> uh, there is um, the French Taunter from Holy Grail. There is Darth Vader. He opens up and has a lot of 1977 original figures. There's Animal, who I love. There's, again, from Phantom Menace, uh, but I, I love this because it's made out of like transistors and all sorts of scrap metal parts. There is a double decker brush bus, and there is the shark um, candy holder, which currently has uh, "We Can Never Go Home," lying not lying cat, clockwork cat from uh, Shutter, and there's mind management pin. There's all sorts of pins in there for comic book stuff. So. I choose my top shelf as my favorite shelf to show off because it fits the most All stuff. Right. Part two of this contest is to show a comic that is in our collection that has more sentimental value than monetary value. And I'm pretty sure that you could pick up X-Men 149 for five bucks at most, probably get it two or three. Uh, condition this is turned up a little bit there, but otherwise it's a pretty clean copy for a 30-something-year-old comic. Um, really nice. So anyway, this is, I believe, the first issue of Uncanny X-Men that I read when I was like in seventh grade, stopping at the corner shop on the way home from school, getting it out of the spinner rack. Um, if not, it was one of the first ones, but in my mind, I think it's the first one. And just look at this team, right? This is <laughs> Wolverine. That's the way I remember Wolverine. I love that costume. Colossus, okay. This is a silly costume. Storm, that was pre-punk Storm. And Nightcrawler's costume has always been kind of cool. Then here's Kitty Pride. This is not too far after she's joined the X-Men, but check out that purple pointed mask. Red and blue sweater with, like, the lightning stripes. Um, the green shorts over the gold and orange uh, leggings. And then the purple, white, and blue leg warmers with matching roller skate with yellow bottoms. I mean, 
just looked ridiculous and I accepted it all at face value because, you know, I was a kid and this is what kids do is they dress differently than the adults and the adults don't understand them. And I just thought that was cool little teenager in this uh, adult comic book and I was so excited to read this. So, you know, it starts off Professor X gets a warning or something bad happens um, and he's thinking about stuff that happened in the back. He's always reminiscing and then here's Kitty Pride presenting the all-new, all-perfect, all-together stunning Sprite. So, yeah, she was Sprite for a little bit before she was Shadow Cat after she was Kitty. But in most people's minds, she's still Kitty. And Professor X is like, oh, I'm an adult. I represent the adult world, and you're a kid, and you don't know anything, and you're not ready to be this on this team, even in this new outfit you designed. And she goes away. And then there's ads. And then, you know, they're chilling in the danger room trying to fix stuff, and Everyone's like, what the heck is going on with this outfit? Wolverine, pumpkin, I hate to say, but we got to stop meeting like this. <laughs> oh, you're so smooth there, Wolverine. Uh, best friends with all the little kids, huh? And then Storm tells Nightcrawler not to make fun of Kitty's outfit, and everybody has a good old chuckle about it. Now it's serious time. X-Men, report to the briefing room. I have an important mission for you. Of course, Kitty is not part of that mission, but you know what she did? She snuck on to this ship. What a naughty girl. She's going to be in so much trouble. And I like this, right? Jin Tavarish. I learned a lot of like my first foreign language words because I took Latin in high school. So I didn't learn much um, <laughs> that you could speak. But I learned like Tavarish and uh, Boismois and all the different um, statements because they had like a nice international cast. I learned a lot of them. Uh, from reading the X-Men. And then, boom! Oh, you're in trouble now. How dare you? You're not old enough to be on this trip. Sh for shame. For shame. I know. Don't be angry, Aurora. And so, you know, instead of making her stay with the ship, she gets to go into this lair with them. And I still love that she's, like, roller skating through. And then they discover this uh, guy. Oh, not yet. Sorry. There's more team interactions and Storm flies and Storm looks fearful. Look at that art. That's pretty cool. It's Dave Cockrum. Nice job. Um, and then we get up to the next page and we find the bad guy. And I've got no idea. He's called Garrock. There you go. There's Garrock. Half stone, half crystal with a loincloth. Sort of bad guy. And then they battle Garrock. And not much else happened um, throughout but it's just, you know, as a comic, this had the ability to captivate my imagination as a kid and just just blow me away with how incredibly cool it was. And so this would be my choice as a comic that has much more sentimental than monetary value. Thanks, guys. Hey, did somebody want to know what my favorite movie was? My favorite movie is probably a tie between Monty Python and the Holy Grail and this movie here called Star Wars. I know some revisionist history people like to call it A New Hope, but in my mind, in my world, it was called Star Wars. No other Star Wars movies existed before it. Um, it was awesome. It was amazing. It was everything that you needed it to be. Um, I became obsessed with it as a kid, and I pretty much kept that obsession throughout, uh, throughout high school, college, and adult years. So, yeah, top movie, Star Wars.